I want to go to Ezekiel chapter number 33. And I'll give you a few moments to get there because some of you probably have never been there before. Also, the state attorney is hiring. If you need a job and you're an attorney, they'd love to have you. Let me correct what I've just said. The state attorney is hiring for employment, not wanting more victims. So be able, okay, just pastor, I just committed a crime. Pastor said state attorney wanted more people. No, wants to hire more people. Okay, Ezekiel 33. Uh, and I encourage you, if you weren't here last week, to re-watch the message. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time re recapping. Um, but I want to go to Ezekiel chapter number 33. And I'm going to do... Let's go with verse number one. Now, this is God speaking to um, the children of Israel through a leader, which is named Ezekiel. He's a prophet. He's part of the major prophets. You have major and minor. They're major because of the, the size of the book, not because of the quality of their writings. But in those days, I want to be clear, the prophet, prophetic ministry did not look like what it looks like today. That you're going to get a house, you're going to get a car. The prophetic ministry was one that spoke to the sins of the world, right? Have you ever, I'm going to write about this online, but have you ever thought where are the prophets or where have they gone, the biblical prophets? Because they would speak about justice, they would call right, right, wrong, wrong, but they, they weren't just concerned about God getting you something. Sometimes they would tell you, you need to get your life together, right? I, I'd be very cautious and careful of prophets that always promise you things and then it leads to an offering at the end. Okay? So I know we want to run to prophetic meetings, but I can almost tell you that by this time tomorrow, you're going to have, now if, if, think about it this way, because we want to be cognitive people. If a prophet has that much authority to change someone's circumstance just by speaking it, why don't they just go to Africa and do it? If they have the power to tell you you're healed today without the Lord's Unction, why don't they just go to the hospitals and do it? So let's use some, but this prophet is being used of God. And Ezekiel chapter number 33 says, Once again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give your people this message. When I bring an army against the country, the people of the land choose one of their own to be a watchman. Somebody say watchman. Type that in the comments or on YouTube. Say, Watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people that if those who hear the alarm refuse to take action, it's their own fault if they die. They heard the alarm but ignored it. So the responsibility is theirs. If they had listened to the warning, they could have saved their lives. But the watchman sees the enemy coming and doesn't sound the alarm to warn the people he is responsible for their captivity. They will die in their sins. But I will hold the watchmen responsible for their deaths. Have you ever thought about somebody and you felt like praying for them, but you said, I don't want to bother them, and you didn't call them? 
Have you ever had a vision about somebody or a dream about somebody and you don't have to be spooky about it and just share it with them like, yo, this is what was on my heart. This, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means to you. I'll be in prayer about it. Have you not done that? You and I are all watchmen and don't let the word men fool you. It also means woman too. So nurse seven says, now son of man, I'm making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then you will die in, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent, they don't repent. They will die in their sins, but you have saved yourself. And for years I have been saying, because I felt like God has been telling us, like America's going to have some tight seasons and we're beginning to see the tightness. And I've always said, and most people who have heard me and heard it a lot of times from me said, I encourage you to save your money because if you save your money, it will eventually save you. Right, I'm not saying be scared and go to the store today and go buy a bunch of toilet paper. <laughs> I am saying that famine is coming and the reason why famine comes is because you can only turn your back to God for so long before God allows you to become a God to yourself. Right? Can the righteous be preserved? Absolutely. But it also requires us to do more than just pray. Now I'm going to get a lot of kickback this morning, but it's okay. Because I want to change your mind about certain things because I think we have a wrong dispensation on how we feel about prayer. Pastor Alden, you can relax. We're not going to backslide this morning. I saw a bunch of hair on your bald head stand up. Pray prayer is not, it's, it's not enough. And the reason why I say it's not enough is because if we were to look at the most poorest countries that know how to pray, they would be out of the condition that they were in if it was only about prayer. There is another level of prayer that we must also recognize. It is instruction. Habakkuk chapter number two is where I want to read and then I'm going to let you sit down and I'll stand for the rest of the time. Habakkuk chapter number two says this. This is Habakkuk who is a minor prophet who has an issue with God. It's okay to have an issue with God. It ain't going to change God's thoughts. It ain't going to make God less God. He's still going to be God on the throne. But it's okay to express your thoughts towards God. Habakkuk says, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand guard at my post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Now, this is where we remember, write the vision. Make it plain. That's God's response to his prayer. A lot of us are praying, but we're not getting the instruction. And so it looks like prayer don't work, but you're only doing a part of the prayer. I've been going to the gym for a long time, can't lose no weight, but if you keep eating baby back ribs, chitlins, oxtails, they're too high right now. We got to wait. We got to pray come down in Jesus' name. If you're eating these things and then you're saying the gym is a lie, it's not a lie. You're just doing part of it. And a lot of us have given up on prayer because we skipped the instruction part. And God is not just asking us to pray. He's asking us to pray and hear instruction. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, breathe light to this passage. You hear us be blessed by the reading and the teaching of your word. So uh, as we've been praying about Watchtower, Minister Nate of the EOS Assembly, we, we were, we were, we've been experiencing unique things because when you start talking about standing your post, you start to see unique activities that are trying to tell you that you're doing and you're on the right track. So for the last few weeks, you've seen a bunch of Hebrew Israelites come to church. We encourage you to ignore them. So this week, to be really good and gracious and, and genuine, we're just gonna play a bunch of music so that we drown them out. 
But here's the thing. This is Augustine of a hippo who says this, and there's a various teachings that we could go into about them, but we won't spend our time on that. The mind needs to be enlightened by light from outside of itself so that it can participate in truth. They'll have that on the screen. As it is not itself the nature of truth, you will light my lamp alone. Augustine of a hippo says to us, the mind needs to be enlightened by the light from outside of itself so that you can participate in truth, which simply means you cannot participate in truth looking for light on your inside. You have to be invited to participate with truth. And there are some individuals, some sects, some strands that are so caught up in making themselves light that they're missing the light of Christ. You cannot hold the Old Testament as sacred and ignore the New Testament. Because the Old Testament is just a mirror depiction of what the New Testament is going to be, which Christ fulfills. If Christ doesn't fulfill it, then we have issues. It's a whole nother subject I'd love to get into, but there, there's a lot of fallacies that you have to be careful of. But I want to tell you this morning, I want to ring a sense of urgency for you to mount your tower, your watchtower, and not leave your post. In a practical sense, as we've been praying on Wednesdays at noon, it was a beautiful time this past Wednesday, and we'll be praying again in the sanctuary at noon. I encourage you to come in and pray. And if you cannot pray, then pray where you are at noon. Many of you made the sacrifice to come on Wednesday. I encourage you to come this Wednesday at 12 noon. Put that in the comments, this Wednesday, 12 noon, this Wednesday, 12 noon. In a practical sense, have you ever went to a grocery store saw the cashier light on, ran with your carriage to wait for the cashier to return to their post. The light of the tower is on, y'all, and the world needs the believers to mount their watchtower. Sometimes being on the tower doesn't stop tragedy, but it does announce it. Can I say that one more time? Sometimes being on a watchtower does not stop tragedy, but it does announce it. As we spoke about last week, the mitzvah is where Jacob and Laban had created an agreement and they said, this agreement has to be watched by someone greater than I. So they called it the mitzvah, the watchtower. And then all throughout scripture you see when we talk about prayer and intercessors, you see this metaphor being used that people who pray are like people who are on a watchtower. Because the Bible is pretty cool in the aspect that it gives us metaphors so that we can understand a greater truth. God assigns us in Ezekiel as watchmen over an assignment. I want you not to miss this because some of you are. When I said God wants you to watch over your assignment as a watchtower, some of you think, oh, that disqualifies me because I'm not in that spiritual stuff. But sometimes God could be speaking to you about your own industry, giving you insight about your industry that people do not know or see. Do not minimize God using you to Sunday morning. God might be giving you an assignment to be on a watchtower about policies that are coming, about the hair industry, about the nail industry, about security industry, about the tax industry. God could be using you as a watchman to sound the alarm. You keep on stealing these PPP funds, you're going to get caught. That's a watchman. A watchman is not throwing shade because they're speaking truth. And a lot of us misinterpret truth for shade because it doesn't cover us the way we like. 
Let me say that one more again. A lot of us don't like truth because it doesn't cover us in the fashion or in the way that we like. This word mitzvah is introduced and chosen to speak to a post. We are watchmen or watchwomen. I think their contention about prayer is that it's a tool that will turn God's will into ours. And if you go into the mindset of prayer that it is a tool that turns God's will into mine, you'll be sadly disappointed. Because there are a lot of things that I prayed for that God did not answer, has not answered, or has not responded to. Some of them, I look back and I say, thank God you didn't answer it. Because at the time, I thought I wanted what I really did not recognize, I did not need, or I did not want. Have you ever thought about marrying somebody and then you saw them later and you're like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So prayer comes with instruction. Habakkuk prays, and then God gives him instruction. I want to assign you today to be on your tower. The watchtower, I'm building a case, and it's much slower than my normal, but I'm going somewhere. The watchtower is important because it also was an agricultural term. I don't know if any of you are farmers. If you're a farmer in here, raise your hand. If you're online and a farmer, let me see you. Okay, nobody, so then you need to listen to me. So the towers were designed for farmers to assign somebody to go up on the tower and watch while they work. You missed it. You need somebody on a watchtower for you to watch while you work. No, you've been developing BFFs, bays, flown out friends. But God is really saying to us, we need people on watchtowers who are looking out for us while we work. Because the farmer was so busy working that his head was down that he could not see enemies coming in to raid his farm vineyard. So everything that he worked for gets taken because he did not see the enemy coming. You need people that would pray for you, that God would put you on their heart so that when them seasons come, because all of us have seasons where we're more spiritual than others, and all of us have seasons where we get triggered by something that brings us into a lower state or a funk. We need people who are more spiritual than us to recognize, hey girl, hey bro, I know around this time you start slipping. So I want to already alarm you that Satan will try to use a bad season that has ended to bring you back into a lower emotional state so that you can no longer work and no longer see. So during times of impending attacks, the watchmen would scour the horizon and invaders then sound a warning alert to the inhabitants that approaching danger is coming and they would close the city gates and they would bar down the city so that the enemy would not be able to creep in. This, my brother and sister, is what watchmen are needed for. They're needed for your marriage. They're needed for your children. They're needed for your job. They're needed for your neighborhood. They're needed for every aspect of life, for your business. Because some of you are in business with someone that's stealing from you and you don't even know they're stealing from you because they cuddle you so well. But when you're able to have watchmen that are able to see, you're able to discern. Now, I want to I wanna insert that just because you heard about watchmen, don't go out and now become super deep. Where now everything is a word from God. You ate some cereal and there wasn't marshmallows in. And now you feel that you got a revelation 
that, that something's about to happen with anybody who's yellow, blue, green, you know, all these type of things that people come up with and it becomes real creepy and scary. Like the word of the Lord, God told me that you're gonna find your spouse and, and they didn't hear from God for themselves. So this is important. The watchmen frequently have a burden or a territory that they're called to watch over. I want to ask you a question because I want you to think. Where do you think God has assigned you? And we're not talking about church. Now, some of you are watchmen for the church, watch women for the church. You stand and pray. You see things, you pray. You say, Pastor, I, I saw, I saw this happening. Blah 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 blah. You know all that type of stuff. But watchmen see. So when we started talking about watchmen, then all this stuff starts happening at the church. People putting flyers on cars and people start interrupting services. And, but that, that's, that's not just natural, that's spiritual because it's trying to get you to respond in a way that will get you off of your post. So I want to give you my message title, which I took some time and slow walk before I gave it to you. I want to talk to you about don't get off your posts. You know, what I've recognized that watchmen are so important because they sit higher than everybody else. They elevate intentionally themselves. Now, you might be saying, well, Pastor, you don't lost me because this message is not for me because I ain't that deep. But here's what Habakkuk did. He made himself climb a watchtower because he understood if I don't get away from the noise, I can never hear from God. How much noise is in your life to where you can't hear from God? If you went to school and you had to study for an exam, what you would typically do is you would shut down all of your activity and you would spend your time locked in a room studying for your exam. Why? Because you were smart and wise enough to know any type of distraction will cause you not to be able to focus on the assignment which is in front of you. Now I want to ask you a question. What is your time to get on your tower? Because if you don't have a set time to get on your tower, then your tower is going to have the light on without you being present. And remember I talked about the cashier going to the line? Maybe it's not the cashier. Maybe it's someone who needed you to pray spiritually and you're not there. Maybe it's someone you care about that needed you to pray for them and you're not there. This is why it is important to have set times that you go to your watchtower because if you have very practical, put in the comments, I need a set time. If you don't have a set time, you have no time. Remember, I always say, if you don't tell your time where to go, you'll wonder where it went. So here it is. Watchmen are constantly interacting with the Lord. You, you got to be constantly warring with God about what you see, what you feel, what you sense, and what you hear. Some of us, the reason why, it, you don't need more degrees. Degrees are important and they're very valuable. But some of us are stuck where we are because we don't have the time for God. Some of the things that we're paying for, we're paying for because we did not pray for. The bad season you're in, some of it is not just the devil. Some of it is God was trying to tell us, but we were so busy that we could not hear him. And when we cannot hear him, we cannot respond. And when you, if I am going to break into your house and you know it, you will be prepared for me when I come. 
but there's nothing worse than being surprised and not being prepared when someone is breaking into your home and what a watchman does is they get ready for attack so that they can be aware you know what I know this is about to come I can't stop it but I'm going to be prepared if you know you're in a season where Satan is just messing with you and all of a sudden you and your children start fighting you and your dog start fighting you and your wife start fighting you got to recognize and be on your tower to recognize some of this is not just natural you just got an increase and now your car breaks down now your body's acting funny now your allergies are going crazy Lord help us Jesus your feet not lining up your feet starting to hurt your back starting to hurt your mind starting to go crazy at some point you got to recognize either this is not natural or God is using this as an alarm to get me to get back to a relationship with him now if God can't drive you to a relationship by yourself I always tell people I had a man that I saw at the gym, he said, man, PD, I know I'm supposed to be back in church. That's the first thing that people say when they see you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming to church. I'm coming to church. It's, they don't even say hi. I'm, I'm coming to church. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. And I said to him, man, I, I think that it's great that you come to church. I said, but here's my thing. I'd rather you walk in than be wheeled in. Because God's going to get you one way or another. I, can, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not rushing today. God, God is going to get you one way or not. You can have your little attitude with God. You can roll your eyes at God. You can go turn up and have a good time. Some of you are in Miami right now turn up. But anyway, you, you can have a good time and you can do all that you want to do. You can go get your little Hennessy. You can get your little Syrah. You can do all that. And God will sit there and say, I'm going to let you have it. 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 Then after a while, God is going to get sick of what you're doing and he's going to force you to a relationship where you either say I'm done with God or God is going to make sure that you recognize that I am the Lord thy God. There is no one higher than me. There is no one greater than me. I will let you do whatever you want to do, but I will let life drive you to your knees. I'll let you fail exams, and then you sit there and say, Lord, I need your help. I'll let you get into circumstances where I'll say, Lord, I just need. The role of a watchman is relentless. Until God's purposes are established, a watchman does not leave his post and is committed. Now, here's where we have a generational disconnect. Y'all ready? Some of you grown up in this church and now you feel like you're an intercessor. And that's cool. I think everybody should feel that way. But the difference is, the generational disconnect is the older generation wouldn't stop praying until they saw it. This generation, our intercessory praying time has an expiration date. Girl, you ain't got your life together. It's been 15 days. I'm done with you. I've been praying for 15 days. I'm done with it. But an intercessor says, I'm not going to stop. Wait, you just missed it. I, I'm, I'm not going to stop until something happens, which, ha which two things happen. One, because I'm doing it for so long, it makes me just naturally do it, and it makes me just want to do it, but it also does something else. It keeps me accountable to what I am responsible for. I am going to pray for you until I take my last breath. Until I see what God told me, I'm going to keep it before the Lord. Okay, let me give you some scripture. Isaiah 62, 6 through 7. Let's get a little ahead of myself. felt to get a little excited. Isaiah 62, verse 6 through 7. Isaiah 62, verse 6 through 7. Isaiah 62, verse 6 through 7. 
it says this. <laughs> it says, it says, it says this. Oh, Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen on your walls. They will pray day and night continually. Day and night. Like in my car driving, Lord, I pray you just take care of this. I, I, I know you're able. I owe the IRS some money. Lord, take care of it in Jesus' name. Go into their credit card system and, and wipe it away in Jesus' name. Y'all ever heard people pray unethical things God would do? Lord, break into Equifax and TransUnion and wipe away things that I owe. Like God is just a straight up West Compton type God. He just breaking into things. No, God has the power to make your creditor say, you know what, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to ask anything from you. He doesn't have to be illegal to be God. It says, give the Lord no rest until he completes. Here, here verse number seven, y'all. Give the Lord no rest until he completes his work. Wait a minute. Give the Lord. No, no, you just missed what I said. Give the Lord. No, 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 no. This, we're talking about God. It says, give the Lord no rest. All who pray to the Lord. Give the Lord no rest until he completes. We can go home on that. Some of you giving God a break. I really should have titled this message, Don't Give God a Break until you see what you believe you are supposed to see. It's the same text in Matthew where it said the woman just kept wearing God out. When God would look up, the woman was right there and she kept on saying, it's me again, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. You ain't answered me the last time, but I just want you to know I'm back. I ain't left yet. I'm back. And I know some of you took a break because you were mad at God. Now that you're back in church, now that you're back online, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. I'm back. I'm back worshiping again. I'm back lifting my hands again. Lord, I believe some things and I'm going to pray until I see what I pray. I saw I was going to have a child and I didn't have a child. I'm going to pray until I see what I've been believing God for. I'm going to pray that I passed this test. I ain't passed it yet. Failed it five times, but I'm going to pray until I see what I believe God was going to do in my life. The attorney lost his exam didn't pass his exam started getting sad because he didn't pass his exam and I said Julian it doesn't matter how many times you fail all they're gonna know is that you're an attorney don't give God no rest until you accomplish it if he let you go to school if he let you pass all these exams certainly Don't, don't you get tired of doing well for in due season. No, 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 no. Don't you get tired of, don't listen to them jack leg folk talking about, oh, church don't work. I'm not going to give God no rest. Don't you get tired in doing well for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. If you don't throw in the towel and you keep showing up on your tower each and every day, each and every night. I don't feel like praying, but I'm going to do it. I don't feel like talking to God, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to stand on my tower and I ain't gonna give you no rest you ain't gonna get a break from me you ain't gonna get a sabbatical from me because I ain't giving you the watchman so yeah, we, ain't, we ain't giving no rest 
So watchmen are on shifts. You, you got to develop networks. Y'all don't have no networks. You can't do this spiritual thing by yourself. You need a network. Let me borrow you. Let me borrow you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. you. Um, France, let me borrow you. Yeah, come on. You won't die. I know the old church made you think you won't die coming up here. You all right. You all right. I promise you'll be fine. All right. Let, let me borrow. Let me borrow you. In Couture. Shorty do I. Let me borrow you. Let me borrow you. All right. This is what y'all going to do. You know, you can have men and women in the same group. It's okay. I know in church that gets kind of weird. Are you talking to a woman? You know, you're supposed to be talking to women. All right, you stay right here. You stay right here. You stay. Got it. Come on, Katera. You stay right here. Okay, I missed something. Pastor Jonas, I'm by you. See, what happens is, is y'all try to do life on your own. And, and Satan is just killing us. Because we think isolation is strength. I'm, I'm too strong to ask people to pray for me. I'm, I'm good. I tell people all the time, pray for me. Every time, every morning, every afternoon, every evening. But, but you need to set up networks. Not just what friends that you talk about, what type of purse you have, what type of shoes you have, and you need those friends too. You need those friends that, hey, what, what you doing this week? Well, girl, we're going down to Miami. Sinners. So we, <laughs> we're just having a good time, right? But there are seasons where you on the outside give Satan permission to destroy you because you don't have watchmen around you. But when you get people as watchmen, get in the middle. Come back to where you are. Yeah, you feel that? See, see watchmen are able to see And they're able to tell things. See, uh, Joe's going to be used. Joe, I want you to go attempt. See, what watchmen do is, it's my shift. I'm tired because watchmen do get tired. And they tap this one, I'm tired. See, this one can't be a watchman right now because she's tired. You can see it in her soul. But if you ain't watching, you can't see it. See, when we try to operate on a deficit, because life has the power of stripping us of what value to us the most. And in some seasons, we just try to respond and react. And because we're not in proper position, and all of us go through it because watchmen need breaks. They need shift recovery. So you would say, listen, it's, 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 it's my time. And, and, and then she'll say, no, I'm tired. And then they would say, no, it's, it's, it's my time. And all of us are forming a circle. The reason we're forming the circle is because we're protecting what's in the middle. Now when Joe tries to come, there's too many watchmen aware. Now they're telling Jonas, he coming. Now what you think is prayer makes him not come. But that's not what prayer does. Prayer can make him not come. But most often times, prayer alerts Jonas that you've been chilling, relying on your watchmen. 
and this is a season where you can't rely on them anymore, you're going to have to step up and take your own authority because there's a greater force coming after you that the watchman will not be able to look after. But, but, but for this moment, this is what you call impromptu preaching. We're going to switch you out, Jonas, because you're spiritually strong. We go, no, don't get out of order. We're going to put you right here. Now, this is what you do because watchmen cover you when you can't cover yourself. When you're not strong enough for yourself, watchmen hide you. You ain't got no hiders in your crew. You got hiders that will fight for you and you need them. But you also need people that know, girl, you're going through a bad season. Go hide right here. We got you. You don't even got to go fight for yourself. Life is overwhelming, girl. Brother, you're tired. I need you to go in this circle and don't come out until we look at you and we tell you're ready to go out there by yourself. But we don't have enough spiritual people to help us when we're struggling. So I want you as a church to stretch your hands in the center. And I want you to cover this young girl in the center. Take 30 seconds and do it. Come on, open your mouth. Even online, you can pray where you're online. Yeah. Come on, church, I need to hear you. Come on, church, I need to hear you. It's like wolves coming after you, Keturah. And they're not giving you a rest. So we speak to your mind even in this season that the weapons that are attempting to form will not prosper. Yeah, we cover you in the blood of Jesus. Every emotional roller coaster, we cover you now in the name of Jesus. We see you. We feel you and we cover you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you got angels in camp round around you, praying and interceding and saying, this child you will not have, this destiny you will not take, this heart you will not have victory over in the name of Jesus. And Father, this is your daughter and we present her over to you and we say heal, 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 heal. Healing is the children's bread. It's the children's bread. We stand on watch. We stand on watch. We stand on watch round the clock, lifting up this young baby girl to you. Father, have your way in her life, in her heart. And I thank you, Lord, that you will not allow her to take the plans of the enemy and internalize them. But Holy Spirit, you will give her victory. Turn her mourning and her ashes into beauty. Allow them to come forth like pure wine in the name of Jesus. Give us eyes to see beyond your struggle. Give us eyes to see where you are in the name of Jesus. But, but what intercessors do, y'all, is intercessors begin to pray. Y'all got to change your circle. Brother, you got to change your circle. You got to 
you got to get some people around you that can help you because you can't you can't fight by yourself you can't fight by yourself because what happens is is when you try to fight by yourself you start to get jumped by spiritual adversaries and you need some backup to help you you need some friends to stand up and say not this time not this season not on my watch I'm not going to sleep on my post I'm not going to let you die on my watch and there's been a lot of people who may have not died physically but they're dying emotionally because you're not on your post and because you're not on your post you're giving access to the enemy and we need some gap standards to say I'm going to stand in the gap I'm not going to let the devil come and take you it's not going to happen on my watch I make a covenant with you it's not going to happen on my watch I'm going to pray for you until you become everything God assign you to be I'm gonna stand and intercede for you until your womb gets filled with that child I'm not gonna give God any rest we need real intercessors that won't give up after 15 minutes that won't give up after 15 days but every day I wake up I'm gonna lift your name before God on the wall that's when people drop in your name in your heart you stand and you pray and you form a wall and you start to cover the shame the bad season that we all will go through we all we all we all we we all we all will go through where we don't feel like fighting where we don't feel like praying where we don't feel like worshiping where we don't feel like tithing where we don't feel like giving where we don't feel like serving where we don't feel like lifting up the name of God but we need people who will stand beside us and say I don't think you're a superhero I don't think you're a superman I understand you're a human that gets dressed like everybody else and I'm gonna stand back to back with you shoulder to shoulder when my shift is over I'm gonna turn it over to somebody else and if I feel like they're not covering their shift I'm gonna help intensify but we're not gonna stop until you see it intercessors don't stop until you see it. No, no, no. Don't stop until you see it. Don't stop striking the ground until you see it. You've gotten prayer fatigued. Don't stop striking the ground until you see it. You're going to be further than what you ever dreamed of. But you can't stop until you see. You're going to be wiser than you ever dreamed of. But you can't stop until you see. You got to keep fighting and wear God out until you see. No, it ain't just going to happen. You're going to pray it till it happens. Leave this sanctuary saying, I, I, need to, I need to change my crew. I don't need to eliminate my crew. I just need another crew. Because watchmen see. Watchmen see. And if you're, if you're spiritual and your crew is right, they'll feel it before you even sense it. I feel you're going through something. They can say I'm fine. It's cool. I feel it. I woke up and felt off about you. I don't know what it is, but it's something. We assume that people who pray don't need people to pray for them. No, we all do it. Man, my mama prays every single day. One day, the greatest conversation I think of my life,
she said, do you know, I mean, this, and if you don't know my mom, my mom gets up every, every day. She prays two times a day for two hours plus. She can pray for an hour straight. No strings, no singers, nothing. And one day we were having a conversation and she said, baby, you don't think I don't believe sometimes? It really shocked me. Because in my mind, she's a superhuman. She's just naturally always praying. She said, sometimes I get discouraged too. You know you on your tower. Because some things are natural. You know, the devil don't want you to hear it. So he wants to kill it so it don't get in your soul. He don't want you to recognize that there is such a deception that he gives. That what he wants to do is shut things down in your life. So that you just say, forget it. I ain't going to even play with it. I ain't going to mess with it. And the reality is, is we could have just said, oh, we're going to go home. Or we could just say, we're just going to keep doing what we need to do until the thing that we believe turns back on. And some of you have walked away from your faith and you didn't wait long enough for the power to turn back on. I'm telling you that I know there are seasons where the lights turn out and it seems like nothing is going right. You just got to stay in position until the power turns back on. I'm not going to let you stop me from doing my assignment. I'm not going to let a power outage stop it. I'm not going to let a sound outage stop it. I've been assigned to deliver a word that we are watchmen on the wall and we ain't getting off because of a distraction. A distraction will try to take you off your wall, but I'm going to stay on my wall because that's what intercessors do. Now when we come to church, we now know, let's pray for the sound that no weapon formed against it shall prosper. Let's pray for the cameras that no weapon formed against it shall prosper because the word is going to get out. The word is going to do what it's going to do. I won't let anything stop me from staying on my tower. Come on, what I want you to do is I want you to praise in your darkness. Somebody just praise in your darkness, praise in your darkness. Come on, lift up a shout of praise in this house. I'm on my tower. 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 my tower nothing is more important to God than prayer 
God will do nothing without prayer. It is the fuel that moves the engine of humanity. Prayer is the fuel that moves the engine of humanity. Don't get tired, y'all. We praying Wednesday in the sanctuary at 12. I came in this morning, I felt a little off. It took me a while to figure out my bearings and I try not to have stuff distract me on Sundays as much as possible. When I came in, I just felt really just off on my bearings. And, but I understand that God wants to get something to us. the start of the service. I don't know what's been fighting you. But if it fights me like it fights you, then I know you need watchmen and watch women. You gotta be real serious about picking a team that will cover you. I got one more thing I gotta do, I, I, and I gotta do these baby dedications, and I gotta go. I, I wanna do this, and I wanna go. Joel, come here. I just, I want you to switch. Dixon. Zeke, switch to that one I sent you. And I need some oil if you. I want you to go in the middle. Katura, I want you to come out in the middle. And I want you to go in the center. y'all to stretch your hands towards this one. Now watch men. We don't stop things that are to come, but we can see them. And I want to tell you that there's gonna come your greatest bout of depression and isolation is trying to come to your address. You've never seen a fight like this. I can't stop it, but I can announce it. I believe pain teaches us something. And I pray. One, I pray for you. The Spirit of God. Father, Oof. break the weight. Who let it out? My heart of Yeah, let let it out.
from your head that's from the depths of your soul when your soul is weary and tired it comes from your soul father I want you to lift your hands and receive change that for me A seer. Now, God, we can't stop everything, but you said you'd reveal it to us before they come. So give Joel boldness to get back on his tower. Don't outsource your tower. Father, give him the wisdom to get on his tower and to acknowledge your power. May you use him in this next season greater than he's ever even imagined. May the classroom of pain be a teacher of your presence. Father, I thank you that the anointing of God rests upon him and no weapon formed against his mind shall prosper. So Father, we cover his mind in the name of Jesus. We come against oppression we drive it out in the name of Jesus. We come against isolation and we ask you, Lord, to let him know he is surrounded by people that value and watch for his soul. So Holy Spirit, watch over him now in the name of Jesus. Cover him, cover him, cover him, cover him from the crown of his head to the, soul, to the soles of his feet. Watchmen, 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 watchmen. We watch and pray, we watch and pray, we watch and pray. Wake him up in the midnight hour. Cause him to seek thy face. Seek thy face, O Jacob. Seek thy face. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. So what's happening in our generation is this, is we're carrying that cry and we're not letting it out. So you keep losing loved ones and you just keep on making through, you just keep pushing forward and you keep pushing forward and then when you really break, you break. Instagram won't fix that. Want you to take a few moments and let your cry out. 15 seconds, let's go. Come on. Father, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let it out. Let it out and let it go. Let it out and let it go. Come on. Come on. Let it out. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Let me hold your hand. I feel it. I can sense it. Come on, man. You ain't got it. Come on. Come on. Let it go. Come on. Let it go. Woo! My time to see you.
because watchmen can feel your pain. Come on, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Man, you can't be strong forever. You gotta hold, you can't hold your peace forever. You got kids depending on you. You got a spouse depending on you. You can't get busy and get past it. I understand to be mad at God. I know you're just here on assignment. I, I know, I understand, I know. I can see it, I can sense it. Come on, watch women. It's not just watch men, it's watch women too. It's not just watch men, it's watch women too. I'm gonna rock with you. I'm gonna rock with you. I'm gonna rock with you. I'm gonna watch with you. I'm not gonna let you feel like you gotta be strong by yourself. I'm gonna rock, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna rock, I'm gonna watch. That's your gift. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. Don't let me cry by myself. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I'm not going to let you die by yourself. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You online, I feel you. The anointing of God come to your house. It sit in your living room. Sit in your home. Whether you're re-watching this, may the presence and the power of God fall fresh upon you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Let it go!
it go, let 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 it go. Let it go. Get me no mind. Let it go. Let it go. Woo. It's everywhere. Cause you've been holding it far too long. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on, you've been carrying it way too long. It's hitting every aspect of this sanctuary, even online. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. You're not alone, you're not alone, you're not alone, you're not alone, you're not alone. Come here, Mike, tell us, I can feel you. Barbara, put your hand on Matt's shoulder. She's right in front of you. Yeah, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, but you're empty. Father, touch his heart, touch his heart. Daddy's gone. But you've learned how to push through it. Let healing fall on your soul. Let commitment hit your heart and soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it hit your heart, let it hit your heart. Father, give her a hug. She's going to ball all on your shoulders. Father, I thank you for strength. You could be naked and unashamed. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. Let it go. Let it go. Jesus. 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 We cry the name. Jesus. Jesus. Above every other name. Say the name Jesus, Jesus, we cry the name Jesus, we cry the name Jesus, 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 we cry the name Jesus, we call out to you.
Nothing else would do Nothing else would do Yeah. 